Chapter 42, The Overlook. At Cour de Lon, we went straight to the hospital. Gramps had tried to wake Graham when, she, when he saw the lake. Gooseberry, Gramps said. She slumped sideways on the seat. Gooseberry? The doctor said Graham had, had had a stroke. Gramps insisted on being with Graham while she underwent tests. An intern had tried to dissuade him. She's unconscious, the intern said. She won't know whether you're here or not. Sonny, I've been by her side for 51 years, except for three days when she left me for the egg man. I'm holding on to her. See, if you want me to let go, you'll have to chop off my hand. They let him stay with her. While I was waiting in the lobby, a man came in with an old beagle. The receptionist told him he would have to leave the dog outside. By herself, the man said. I said, I'll watch her. I had, I had a dog just like her once. I took the old beagle outside. I sat down on the grass, and the beagle put her head in my lap and murmured in that special way dogs have. Gramps calls it a dog's purr. I started wondering if Graham's snake bite had anything to do with her stroke, and then I wondered if Gramps felt guilty for whizzing off the highway and stopping at the river. If we hadn't gone to that river, Graham would never have been bitten by that snake. And then I started thinking about my mother's stillborn baby. And maybe if I hadn't climbed that tree and if my mother hadn't carried me, maybe the baby would have lived and my mother never would have gone away. And everything would still be as it used to be. But as I sat thinking these things, it occurred to me a person couldn't stay all locked up in the, in the house like Phoebe and her mother had tried to do at first. A person had to go out and do things and see things, and I wondered for the first time if this had something to do with Graham and Gramps taking me on this trip. The beagle in my lap was just like our moody blue. I rubbed her head and prayed for Graham. I thought about Moody Blue's first litter of puppies. For the first week, Moody Blue would not let anyone come near and um near come anywhere near those puppies. She licked them, clean and nuzzled them. They squealed and pawed their way up to her with their eyes still sealed. They stumbled about and she nudged them against her belly so that they could nurse. Gradually, Moody Blue let us touch the puppies, but she kept her sharp eyes on us, and if we tried to take a puppy out of her sight, she growled. Within a few weeks, the puppies were stumbling away from her. The Moody Blue spent and Moody Blue spent her hurting her days hurting them back. But when they were about six weeks old, Moody Blue started ignoring them. She snapped at them and pushed them away. I told my mother that Moody Blue was being terrible. She hates her puppies. It's not terrible, my mother said. It's normal. She's weaning them from her. Does she have to do that? Why can't they stay with her? It isn't good for her or for them. I suppose they have to become independent. What if something happens to Moody Blue? They wouldn't know how to survive without her. While I prayed for Graham outside the hospital, I wondered if my mother's trip to Idaho was like Moody Blue's behavior. Maybe part of it was for my mother and part of it was for me. When the Beagle's owner returned, I went back inside. It was after midnight when a nurse told me I could see Graham. She was lying still and gray on the bed. A little dribble was coming out of one side of her mouth. Gramps was leaning over her, whispering in her ear. A nurse said, I don't think she can hear you. Of course she can hear me, Gramps said. She'll always be able to hear me. Gramps' eyes were closed. Wires were attached to her chest and to, the mo to a monitor, and a tube was taped to her hand. I wanted to hold her hand and wake her up. Gramps said, we're going to be here a while, Chickabitty. He reached in his pockets and pulled out his car keys. Here, in case you need anything from the car. He handed me a crumpled wad of money. In case you need it. I don't want to leave Graham, I said. Heck, he said. She doesn't want you sitting around this old hospital. You just whisper in her ear, and if you want to tell her anything, and then you go do what you got to do. We're not going anywhere. Your grandmother and I will be right here. He winked at me. You be careful, Chickabitty.